Welcome to another episode where we talk about an aspect of RimWorld. A while back, we talked about the drugs in RimWorld, however, we kept out the many, and I mean many, consumables in the vanilla expanded set of mods. So today, we will be talking about all the drugs, their effects, and whether it's worth using them, or at the very least, selling them. First, we have vanilla expanded medieval's wine, the classic fancy drink of fermented grapes. Like beer, you put the prepared grapes into a barrel and wait for it to ferment. Unlike beer, you can wait longer and longer for it to go up in value, though your pawns don't quite care for the quality when drinking. When selling, the value does go up. Not as good as beer, but alright for selling or role-playing purposes. After all, who wouldn't want to work in a vineyard and make fancy booze? Just don't include antifreeze, please. Moving to vanilla expanded settlers, we have my writer's favorite booze to sell being chemshine. Chemshine, as implied, is made by fermenting chemfuel, and given the mod also includes a plant that grows chemshine, you can see how profitable profits can grow. Easy to make a decent price and pawns enjoy the flavor. Yeah, there is one big problem however. When pawns drink chemshine, they temporarily gain the trait of a boomerlope. They explode on death. Yeah, that's pretty hilarious up until you remember that settlers tend to build things out of wood and now things are not fine. Oh, and muffalos love this stuff, so store properly or you may have a bunch of giant walking bombs. Reminds me of the Christmas party. Poor little guy. But other than those problems, good booze for selling. With insectoids, you get the drug of royal insect jelly, which you get by either creating a princess to spawn some for your colony or butchering certain insectoids. If a pawn takes it, they get joy, a bit of hunger fixed up, but most importantly, a 5% flat immunity boost. Perfect for when you get the plague. Now you might be thinking that's great, but what happens if they eat too much? Well, they get addicted, and when you run out, if they go into withdrawals, they'll painfully turn into a mega spider. As you do. Yeah, I don't get it either, but perhaps take it easy on this stuff. Only use it if you need it for beating infections or if you have a bunch of princesses in your barn. Vanilla Expanded Cooking gave us the drug in the form of desserts. Fun meals that pawns won't eat when hungry, but instead usually when socializing. Think of it as a fun snack to keep pawns happy. Pretty straightforward and easy to make. Just keep in mind too many sweets can cause addictions to the sugar and can cause some of the other health problems. Trust me, you don't want the diet beat us. So before we continue, I just want to thank everyone who subscribed, and if you haven't already, please do. Every sub helps the channel and lets us know we are doing things right. The Patreon is also open to everyone to get early videos and maybe a few bonuses along the way. Either way, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Brent, what's next? Ah, oh, crap. Okay, let's do this. We are gonna run through them quickly. So, whiskey. When brewing out of corn or flour, you need to keep in the dark or it will be ruined. Pawns who drink it get a labor buff, but more importantly, you can double distill the stuff for a better whiskey for a bigger buff with extra value. Tequila. You need agave and insect meat to make the must. The final product has a high nutrient value and it increases shooting accuracy the more drunk your pawn is. No idea how, though. Vodka is the cheapest and easiest to make. Just put some potatoes into a tub and five days later you got the stuff. This will make your pawns more accurate in melee the more drunk they are. Gin is a fancier drink made of berries and pawns who drink this one feel a little more sociable. Good middle ground as the mod describes. Not fancy enough for whiskey but not desperate enough for vodka. Cider is unique. Among the boozes because you don't need to ferment it in a barrel. Just make the unfermented cider out of any fruits and put the stuff in a warm place. Wait a bit and you got proper cider. This stuff does have the benefit of not causing a pawn to get addicted to alcohol or go past the warm drunk state. So good if you need to have some booze in the compound without the risk of, say, vomiting on important turret generators. Finally, for the base liquors, we have the Umbrandy. As the name suggests, it's made from the rare Ambrosia. First, you take Ambrosia and make it into mash, then put it into a warm place. I suggest next to the cider and wait. It will become a must that you can put into its cooker. Now you wait and wait, and you will be doing it if you want a legendary grade as it's gonna take 120 days. Now, why would you do that? Well, the better the grade, the more likely a pawn who drinks it will get an artistic inspiration. But more importantly, it will act as a high quality artwork, so maybe don't drink it. Savor it with your eyes, or you know, put it into a cheap cocktail and make your pawns cry. So what are cocktails? Well, if the alcohol you can brew wasn't enough, now you can mix them together to not only get more effects, but a 5% flat inspiration chance after drinking. Now I should warn you, if you drink lavish cocktails, your pawns will get hammered. 
hard. Of course, this mod doesn't just have booze to drink, oh no. It also has tea and coffee, both of which can help keep a pawn perky and happy. Tea is great for buffing immunity gains and reduces restfall rates all without being addictive. Now coffee, well, if you get it hot, you can reduce the effects of hypothermia, reduce restfall rate, and give a buff to learning. Or if you put it in your freezer, you get iced coffee, which does all that but instead reduces heat stroke rates. Being caffeinated through it is mildly addictive, so keep that in mind. There is soda, which gives a manipulation bonus and makes pawns happy as, hey, who doesn't like a cold soda on a hot day? Though you can use soda for something hotter. Energy drinks, which is made of soda, coffee, and uh, uranium. Yeah, you get 20% rest restored and 25% movement speed, then crash. All reverse. Oh, and toxic buildup on top of that. Finally, brewing gives us tobacco in the form of cigarettes and cigars. Pretty straightforward. They are smokables. They suppress appetites, make pawns very happy, and boost consciousness. In return, cigarettes are very addictive, with cigars not as much, but there is a risk. Naturally, smoking causes asthma and carcinoma. I don't recommend them if I'm being honest. So, we done, Bren? Oh, well. All right, then. On to round two of brewing, it seems. So, these expanded coffees and teas act like the base ones, but with an extra boost. So when I don't mention the base effects, now you know why. Lattes are a mix of coffee and milk. It acts stronger than normal coffee. Mochas are coffee and chocolate. It's no different than coffee, but does give higher joy. An Irish coffee has you mixing coffee and whiskey together to get both effects combined in a slightly stronger effect. Pumpkin spice is a trader-only drink that is cheaper than coffee and has its same effect. The Espresso Romano is a good mix of lemon and coffee, good for treating gut worms. Mint tea and coffee naturally uses mint, and with your nice minty breath, boosts social impact. Dalagona coffee has a lot more sugar in it, so be careful. It's more addictive, but hey, more research speed. Cannibal coffee is just coffee with bits of human in it. Yeah, great for cannibals, kind of freaks out everyone else. Black tea, which is milk and tea, is a stronger tea. Pretty straightforward. Green tea is a mix of tea and sugar. Same effect as the base tea, but pawns will feel more joy drinking it. Lemon tea, like Espresso Romano, uses lemons to help treat gut worms. Wen Wang is a mix of coffee and tea, which adds a lot of joy, a mood buff, oh, and is pretty addictive caffeine-wise. It's also a hard name to say. Earl Grey is the orange tea of the fancy folks. Great joy and a bit of nutrients to boost. It will also improve research speed. This is also one of Newbert's favorites. Masala Chai Tea uses tea and spices to actually reduce cholesterol. Awesome if you have a lot of fattening food in your colony. Noon chai tea is tea and salt, and it reduces high blood pressure, again very useful. Then there's kombucha tea, is a mix of tea and mushrooms to reduce diabetes, super useful when you have a lot of sweets. Finally, lemonade, a nice mix of lemons and sugar for a summer quenching treat. Always safe to consume, and pawns always feel a bit of joy sipping it. Okay, that was quite a mouthful, but I promise we are almost done. We have the vanilla expanded pirate's drink of choice, rum. Now rum in RimWorld is different from real life rum. To make it, you need to have a pawn wear a rum suit. It's sweaty, it's heavy, and pawns hate it. But in return, you get to make rum. Please, don't ask what it's made of. Just know it will fulfill a pawn's alcohol need and fill up hunger too. So morale and hunger issues are reduced with some of this drink. Finally, we have from Vanilla Expanded Classic Opium, the product of the poppy seed plant. This drug will dull all the pain a pawn will ever feel unless they run out of the stuff. Then that withdrawal will hit them hard. All right, hit me with this. Didn't work. Like Luciferium, once you take this, you are hooked for life. So if you plan to use this, make sure you have a lot. Or perhaps just sell it off. It does have a decent value, all things considered. Okay, that was a lot to talk about. If we missed anything, do let us know. Though, now I wonder what would happen if I gave a pawn everything all at once. Mm -hmm. Big mistake, never doing this again.